Hey church, happy Sunday. Thank you, witness. Good morning, everyone. That's a good one. Thank you. Welcome to Foothills United Methodist Church as we gather together in person and online. We're ushering in a new season of the church for Advent as we prepare for Christmas and the coming of Christ into our lives once again. And we have lots of reasons to celebrate uh, today and in the days ahead. But first, let's begin by greeting friends and loved ones who've gathered with us today. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you uh, all. I just saw Mark Taylor in the back. Hi, Mark. You were waving at us. Good to have you back with us. And it's great to have all of you. We have lots of things going on in the life of the church, and I want to share some of those with you uh, today. Uh, you probably uh, have already noticed uh, we have Celebrate Christmas happening, and that's an annual tradition where we have 
uh, different ministries, uh, both within our church and in our community, uh, that serves others that you can contribute to in honor or memory of someone for the Christmas season. Uh, Prayer Quilt Ministry has items uh, for sale in the narthex, as you saw. A lot have been um, sold already, but they are available after this service as well. And then if we invite you to go to the Zerbi room, upper Zerbi uh, room, uh, just follow the, the red arrows on the ground and head down, and there you will find all types of tables set up with different ministries. Lots of refreshments today, both for food and drinks. So please join us following the service and uh, make this season special for someone that you love by giving to others. Okay, Advent study, we kicked that off this past Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. in King Hall, uh, both in person and online. That will remain so through the next three Wednesdays. And each week we gather together to read and reflect upon the scripture that we will have as our, our scripture for each Sunday. So it prepares you well for the following Sunday coming up. And uh, we invite you to take part in it, uh, just an hour together, uh, either in person or online. Next one is coming up this Wednesday, 630. Okay, Christmas concert, another great tradition. We know we have wonderful music here as evidenced by Witness, by Bobby and jazz and choir and organ and piano and bells. It all comes together uh, to celebrate this season through music. That's going to happen next Sunday, 4 p.m., right here in the sanctuary. And bring your friends, your family, community members. Let's fill the pews and enjoy that time together. Also, mark your calendars. Uh, December 24th this year is going to fall on a Sunday. That means we will have four services offered that day. Uh, that Sunday morning service will be 10 a.m. instead of 2 in the morning. And then we have our three traditional in the afternoon and evening. But the 10 a.m. will be focused on family, children, caroling, um, the Christmas story told through narration, uh, and also, of course, a cooking exchange. So mark your calendars if you wish to attend that service. Bring your family, your children, your loved ones and uh, bring some cookies to exchange with others and then experience the Christmas story in that way. Uh, and in a season of uh, when we're looking for a new life and birth, uh, I'm pleased to share with you that uh, Riley and Sarah Adams, members of our congregation, had their first child, uh, a baby boy, James Lyon. On November 26th, last Sunday, I know the Moms Connect, Connect group got together and put together a basket for them, but we welcome James into the life of the church and congratulate the family. It is Advent season, and our tradition is to light the Advent wreath and a candle for each Sunday. So I'm going to invite Sharon Russo and Chris Buckle to come forward now to share with us the reading and the lighting of the candle of hope. Good morning. It's so beautiful to see your faces today. Today, we light the first candle of Advent, the candle of hope. We put our hope in the one to come, the promised one who comes from God to bring good news of salvation. We hope in the one who will lead us to walk in the light of the Lord. We hope he will not let us live in dark valleys, but on the high mountain of God. We light this candle in hope. Amen.
We gather our hearts together now in prayer, those prayers that we wish to lift up individually in our own hearts, and you're invited to light a candle at the front of the sanctuary at either of the two prayer tables if you wish to do so at any time during the prayer time. Also, we lift up prayers for those in our family of faith who are in special need. We informed everyone by email uh, of a passing of a longtime member of our congregation, Chuck Robbins. Chuck passed away peacefully on Tuesday before Thanksgiving, and our prayers are with his family at this time. And we do have a prayer quilt. It is for Steve, a friend of Sarah Jane Morrison. Uh, He has recently undergone heart bypass surgery, and prayers are requested for a positive outcome and complete healing and recovery. Let us bring our hearts together now as witness leads us into a time of centering, followed by a time of silence, and then our pastoral prayer. God of hope, we are your grateful children who come before you in this Advent season. We praise you, O God, as long as we live in every way that we know how. We put our faith in you, and our hope in you rest secure. Compassionate God, you who open human hearts to receive you gladly, Open our hearts this day. Remove our resistance. Enlighten our minds and brighten our eyes that we may recognize your coming again in the Christ child. For it is in him that we find strength for our inner being. It is in him that we are rooted and grounded in love. It is in him that we are set free to accomplish abundantly far more for you than we ever could alone. And it is because of him that our hope overflows and we never lose heart. Merciful God, we ask that you comfort us even as we comfort those who mourn, especially the Robbins family and all others experiencing grief this day and to encourage the poor in spirit. Be with all who are facing health challenges, physical, mental, and emotional. Be with each and every one. Guide them into healing and wholeness. Shepherd us, O God, so that we may shield the weak, bring back the lost. Forgive us, that we may become forgivers. 
Humble us that we, like you, may humbly serve and especially reach out with love to our neighbors in need and forgive us for our lack of grace. God of Advent, come to us. As in the past and in the future, be with us now. Receive these prayers of our hearts and bless them, even as we bless you in every way that we know how. We offer them in the name of Jesus as we pray again the prayer that he taught us, singing together. Today's scripture is Mark 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather the elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of those gathered together be acceptable unto you, O oh Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Well, today is the first Sunday of Advent, and we begin a new year in the life of the church. And you probably recognize that as you entered the sanctuary today and you saw how all the beautiful decorations have been put up. Uh, we give thanks to Sherry Yetter and Deb Curry for leading that, along with a big team of volunteers uh, yesterday who made it possible. Thanks to all. And 
it, it ushers in this season that we call Advent. Advent literally means the coming. And in this case, we are anticipating the coming of Christ. This is the season of preparation as we await, await the arrival of Jesus, the Word made flesh, God coming into our lives as a little child once again. So it's our practice to set aside these four weeks in the church calendar to prepare ourselves spiritually for his arrival. Now, I know both here and in the world, you are already experiencing the sights and sounds of Christmas. The decorations, the music, the food, the purchasing of gifts. But you probably weren't expecting the scripture that Susan just read to you from the Gospel of Mark. The sun will be darkened and the moon and will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. This is our introduction to Advent. It literally are signs of the apocalypse in the heavens. And they signal not the first coming of Christ, but the second coming. When we go back to when these words were first put down in the Gospel of Mark, we have to remember that the first Christians at that time were being persecuted by the Roman Empire. They suffered greatly. And they didn't gather publicly in sanctuaries like this, but they came together as extended families in their own homes, meeting privately and in, in secret. And they needed words of hope. They needed to know that indeed Christ was coming once again, in this case, to overcome Caesar's empire. Beware, keep alert, Jesus told them, for you do not know when the time will come. The promise that Christ would come again, but none of us would know the day or the hour. But the Son of Man would appear in the clouds and usher in once and for all the full realization of God's kingdom here on earth. 2,000 years later, we find ourselves still waiting, still preparing. And while our time and place may be very different, the need for God's hope, for God's promise, is still just as necessary today as it was 2,000 years ago. We all know that war rages in Israel and Ukraine. Violence happens each and every day in our nation. Hate often dominates our discourse, and many struggle to meet the basic needs of life. So we need a restart in our lives, my friends, a, a time to pause, a time to reflect, a time to declare that we need Christ just as much now as we did two millennia ago. How many of you have ever seen the film Big Night? 1996, a few. It's been a few years now. If you haven't, I invite you to, to watch it on your favorite streaming platform. Film stars Stanley Tucci, Tony Shalhoub, many others. But the two of them are two Italian brothers who immigrate from Italy to America, and they open a restaurant. And the food they prepare is excellent. It's the best. But they can't seem to get enough business to make ends meet. So a friend who owns a restaurant competing business on the other side of town says, hey, I'll help you out. And this is how. He says, I will promise to send the great singer and band leader Louis Prima and his band to your restaurant. And once the word gets out that Louis Prima is there and loves your food, everybody will come. 
So the brothers take everything that they had, the last remaining funds in the bank, all of their resources and time and energy to create a big night. A big night of the best food and party that they can imagine for Louis Prima and his band. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you watch this movie, do not watch it on an empty stomach because everything is delicious looking in this movie. And the brothers get to work, and they plan the meal, and then they invite all of the closest friends and families to join them for the big night. And the guests arrive, and they're mingling and talking over cocktails, waiting for this multi-course meal, and of course waiting for Louis Prima and his band. And they wait, and they wait, and they wait a little more until finally the brothers realize that they've been had. Their friend is not sending Louis Prima and his band to them, and he will never arrive that night. They had invested everything that they had the food prepared, the tables are set, all the guests are there waiting, and the guest hasn't, the main guest hasn't arrived. So finally, they await no more Stanley Tucci as the brother just looks around and announces, let's eat. And they all sit down and they have the best meal ever. The brothers discovered that even without Louis Prima, they had indeed created their big night. That on the surface level they had failed, but at a deeper level, they found something much more powerful and important in the preparation and sharing and sacrificing for each other. That is how we should live our lives during Advent. Prepared, ready to share the best of ourselves with others. And if we can do that, then we don't have to worry about the day or the hour of Christ coming. If we can live in the here and now, and do what Christ has called us to do, then all will be well. And we know what to do. Susan preached on it last Sunday. To feed the hungry and to clothe the naked and to visit the sick and those imprisoned. The way you're doing it when you support Celebrate Christmas or give of your time and talents. When you do that, then you're doing it for Christ himself. I like how Karl Rahner, who is a 20th century theologian, summed it up about Advent. He said, O God who is to come, grant me the grace to live now in the hour of Advent in such a way that I may merit to live in you forever in the blissful hour of your eternity. What this scripture tells us and what this season tells us is that on this first Sunday of Advent, the past and future of Christ are met together here and now in the present of today. You know what the final verse of the New Testament is of our Bible as Protestants in the book of Revelation. It's the 22nd chapter. It's the 20th verse. In Greek, it's just one word, Maranatha. That means come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, and take away the suffering and pain. Come, Lord Jesus, and make all things right in God's new creation. Come, Lord Jesus, 
and restore us to wholeness in the very image of God in which we were first created. That is our longing. That is our hope. And witness expressed it for us, and we sang together in those words written more than 200 years ago by Charles Wesley, one of our founders. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find thy rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Here's the good news as we start a new year. Advent is here. And as you decorate your homes and purchase gifts for loved ones and prepare for the parties that are starting now, remember this, what Jesus taught us. Stay awake. Be alert. The Lord is coming soon. So let us be vigilant. Let us prepare our hearts and souls and minds for Christ once again. Because, friends, we have a big night to get ready for. Amen. In this Advent season and the season of Christmas, it is a sign and a time for us to be grateful and to express our gratitude to God in a variety of ways when we come together for worship and prayer to sing together, and to offer our gifts. If you wish to offer a gift today in person, you may drop it off in the basket in the narthex as you depart. Make sure you stop by and check out the prayer quilts, take a photo with Matthew Naslin by the the Christmas tree, check out Celebrate Christmas in Upper Zerby. If you're not with us in person today, but online, you can participate and celebrate Christmas that way, and also give your gifts as indicated online on the screen before you. Let us give thanks to God in this first Sunday of Advent with our gratitude and thanksgiving as Tori shares with us now, Light of the World.
We come now to the time to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion together. And as we do so, if you are at home, we invite you to prepare your own form of bread and cup that you can share when we do so here in the sanctuary. We also invite all of you to participate in the liturgy, which will be shown on the screen before you, and to respond when indicated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who look for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation and neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things, and the rich you send empty away. And your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will, freely accepted death on a cross. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. In the United Methodist Church and in this congregation, the table of the Lord is open to all. So all are invited to come and partake as they wish. We will commune in this fashion. I'll ask those who are helping to serve to come forward first to receive the bread and the cup, then each of you at either of the two stations at the front of the sanctuary. As you come, if you'll please take a piece of the bread 
and your own cup, return to your seats, and there you may take the elements. If you so desire, there are gluten-free wafers available at the corner of the table. And if you're with us online, we invite you to share at this time as we share in this holy meal in person. All things are now made ready on this first Sunday of Advent in this new season of life for the church. Let us come and share together as those who are helping to serve come first.
Let us pray. O oh God, as we enter into this Advent season, we pray and prepare for your coming once again into our lives in such an unexpected way as a small child born like us in order to be saved. We ask that you help us in this season to make our hearts open to receive you as we join together in expectation and love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please stand and let's sing together our final song. to come into our lives once again. Go in peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.